does anyone have any pecuniary interest in general nature of uh, in this uh, from this meeting? Seeing none, we will move on. As usual, uh, we like to receive uh, a lot of the reports um, prior to um, there any discussion. And uh, as you can see, there are six items listed. May I have a mover that we uh, receive all of those reports as information? Someone to move it? I move. Uh, I'm sorry, Jesse. We, we, there we go. Yeah, I, I see Jesse. Jesse is a mover, yes, and Laurie is a seconder. Okay. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, so they're all received. Now, um, <clears throat> you've also received, moving on to item D, the minutes of the of the, the previous uh, meeting. Excuse me one sec. Um, are there any errors or omissions? Hearing none at this point, um, may I have someone move that we adopt, we approve as circulated the minutes of July of the July 16th board meeting? My uh, my my little raised hand has disappeared because of the minutes on the screen. Yeah, that's same here. Uh, if, if you click on the uh, you click on the uh, participants button, it should appear in the middle of the screen. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's back. Yeah, so, it's back. So it, it appears that Jesse is moving the um, approval of these minutes. As, may I have a seconder? A Dorothy. All in favor? Carried. There are no, no one against. Um, <clears throat> moving on to item item D two. Um, board is complement and, and vacancy. I made I a note there. Pardon? I can speak to that one for you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, well, really, I'd written, done a question myself. Did, did, did council have any objections to uh, our recommendation? No. So it was passed. Uh, I have received the resolution that is keeping the, uh, the current complement through the balance of uh, this term. Thank you. Okay. May I have someone move it? We receive that discussion. Uh, Rob is a mover and uh, Gary is a seconder. All in favor? Anyone against? Uh, that's carried. <clears throat> Question for you, Sabrina, on item C. Have there been any deputy or are there any deputations? There are not. We've received no deputations and nor no correspondence by the deadlines. And then yesterday evening was the deadline for credentials for anyone who wanted to speak to an item on the agenda, and we've had none as well. Good, thank you. That moves us along pretty fast then. Moving along to um, item F. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is our proposed budget for 2021. Sabrina, um, would you pre perhaps talk on that particular subject? Yes, so I will put up the uh, screen for you. Um, the budget has been amended since it was first released uh, last week to you. Uh, so what has been changed on there was we did have one minor edit that needed to happen, but as well, the town has uh, moved forward with their interfunction, uh, interfunctional transfers, which is basically different departments who are uh, charging back hours of use. So maintenance for maintaining the 
uh, Craig Leith Heritage Depot and the LA Shore branch, uh, finance department for doing our billing, HR, those types of things. So you will see that that is now a change on this budget. Uh, it's something that was spoken of on the 2020 budget to happen across all budgets. So it's not just uh, Blue Mountains Public Library Board that is receiving this. Um, it typically had been done at the end of a fiscal where they were looking back for some numbers. Over the 2020 year, they've started to track now their hours uh, with a new system that has been put into place. So this is a estimate of hours for 2021 based on what they've been tracking for the early, uh, the late months of 2020. And I anticipate this becoming uh, a closer number even in the 2022 budget. So this is a, uh, a positive piece, uh, but we do have to make sure that as people are comparing 2020 to 2021 budget, that they are comparing apples to apples because it will appear that there is a $300,000, $400,000 increase, which there has not been an increase in our budget. Uh, the reality is this has always been an expenditure by the town. They're just now properly tracking all of them across all of their departments. So it is a best practice for accounting. Um, outside of that, which is really the one major change, I will uh, take questions and certainly if there's any pieces that anybody would like me to speak on, I will. Uh, but I did not plan on walking through the entire budget unless the board had questions. Maybe uh, if you um, remove the, uh, the, uh, the budget, uh, Sabrina, from the screen. I okay. Can uh, Mr. Chair, just before I do that, this yeah. bottom line here is where I'm speaking that there will appear to have been a major shift from like 101 or 1.1 million, uh, 1 million to 1.4 million, which really is that interfunctional transfer. Uh, so that is something that we'll have to be making sure that in questions with the public that all of the board members are are prepared to be able to talk about this number here being uh, not new to our budget, but a piece that has always been part of the budget, just not shown in the budget process, but in the final auditing process. Yeah, thank you. Um, so when I was looking uh, at these numbers and, and, your, and your report, uh, Sabrina, um, it occurred to me that your estimate your budget, the estimated budget for 2021 to operate the library is a million sixty-seven, which is the by subtracting the two hundred and ninety-two from the bottom figure, it comes to one million and nine and sixty-seven thousand. Um, could you just briefly, for the benefit of the other board members, perhaps again uh, go into how did you arrive at those numbers and how much influence did the town have in those numbers? Certainly. Uh, so last year in the 2020 budget, we did do uh, zero budgeting, which is what the uh, council had requested that many uh, departments, including the library, had completed to be able to say start fresh and really think about what it is you need to do. Um, similarly, I had done that in 2019 uh, because the 2018 budget had already been approved when I had started uh, by the previous board and the previous CEO. So I did that in 2019 and 2020, which really cleaned up what we're doing um, for the 2021 to look at um, how we're doing things, not just being status quo, and then also considering how COVID is going to impact that. So simply because we had a certain portion of money on uh, a line didn't mean I was going to do the exact same thing because with COVID, all of these lines really have shifted. So we did make some cuts in certain areas that we knew we could shave down to be able to take on some of the new burdens that we expect the 2021 year will have for ongoing PPE and sanitizing. Uh, one of the other pieces we know is going to be an ongoing matter is the amount of staffing that we need to be able to have an extra staff on every shift uh, for contact tracing at Ellie Shore. Um, so we didn't want to 
have a major increase by asking for more staff. Uh, that is how we've sort of balanced our budget is to work within that same number that we had before and work forward. Uh, the town is active in the conversation, but the board sets the budget. So although the town, uh, town staff and council in the end will look at items and council will approve or disapprove a bottom line, it's the board who looks at the individual line items and approves the budget. Um, that's part of the mandate of a public library board. Uh, the council's uh, finance department have been working with me to make sure that some of the numbers um, are accurate. So for example, salaries and benefits, uh, we have our numbers from 2019 and 2020, but each year there is an expected um, COLA cost of living uh, allowance increment that is going to be in there and we align whatever uh, the town is doing to our salaries. So in that way, the HR and finance department are very active in making sure the positions that we have will continue on the pay grid of the town. Um, and then obviously they've been active with filling in the portion for the, uh, the transfer section because that is something that they're doing their own billing and they know what those numbers are. Thank you. I have another couple of questions, but does anyone else have any questions of Sabrina? Yeah, I've got my hand up. Yes, Jesse. Uh, Sabrina, I, just, I have a couple, a couple of questions just by way of information. Uh, look, I'm looking at the uh, operating budget, and there's um, you show for operating expenses a proposed budget of about forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Can you help me as to what? What are the operating expenses which go into that number? Certainly. So through you, Mr. Chair, that is the Ellie Shore specific uh, for that 47525 If we actually go down two pages, that would be the combined between Ellie Shore and CHD. But ultimately, it's the same information. So our salaries and benefits are just that. It is full-time salaries, part-time salaries, student salaries, and any of our uh, special positions that we bring in through Young Canada Works and Grants. Our administrative expenses are looking at uh, items like your photocopying paper and typical office uh, supplies, um, your, um, your phone, your internet, those types of pieces. Our operating expenses are a larger one, and it might not be the best wording for it, uh, but operating expenses is the line that the town uses for their offset. And in our case, that's where all of our programming goes. It's where our non-consumable, our, our full consumable um, resources go, such as magazines, newspapers, electronic resources, things that we would not consider capital that we can work from year to year that are consumable as of the time you use them like a magazine. Um, so the big portion of that will be our programming, our special type services, uh, the filmmaking that we do with CHD for our award-winning films. Um, so that's what is going into there. So okay. the Ellie Shore is 47,000 and change. Uh, and CHD is 29, almost 30,000, which gives us a combined number for uh, the overall. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a second question through you, uh, Morris. Under the combined operating budget, Sabrina, uh, one of the, uh, there's a section for transfers, and I'm not clear as to what it, what it means. It says transfers from other reserves budgeting for minor for negative four eight thousand dollars can you help me what that means so this is the section that our finance department through the town will complete on our behalf um, some of the pieces are going to be the interfunctional transfers where they're billing back hours of other staff uh, the transfers to capital are during uh, dealing specifically with the capital uh, transfers and then our other reserves are looking at things uh, that would be qualified from other areas. For example, if we are doing uh, a strategic plan, which will be in this year, 
that qualifies out of development charges. So it isn't something that has to come from tax. It's something that's already in a reserve somewhere else. Uh, so that is what that's coming from. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Jesse, or pardon me, um, Laurie, I believe your hand was up first. Yes, thanks. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, combined operating budget and uh, it, the amounts, uh, there's salary and benefits around 778,000. And that, but the, um, we're in with the town on that in terms of whatever the town grant staff, our staff gets. So it's really only the remaining items on that section under expenses over which we have any discretionary control, right? Correct. So really our budget looks like we have control over about $160,000, whereas the rest of the budget is really um, uh, as a result of town decisions. Is that a fair thing to say? Uh, price pointing, yes, I would say that is a fair uh, piece to say that where our, our salaries will, will align. The board does have the ability to um, add or remove positions, move positions from part-time to full-time, full-time to part-time. So there are some discretions by the board on the salary end, but the actual grid is something that you're correct, is approved by the town that, that we, uh, we participate in. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, Dorothy, your, your hand is still up. Oh, sorry, that was a mistake. Thank you. I'm good. Rob, I see you have raised your hand. Yes, and just very quickly, uh, I think we've got a, a pretty good budget here, one that we can we can uh, persuade. <laughs> we may have more more luck this time around. Um, and we don't know where where things are going next year. We suspect that although there has been some money coming from the upper levels of government, the gravy train is going to stop, especially if there is a second wave. So we are going to have to take a cautious approach to everything. We've tried not to lay anybody off. Most of the people we still need, and a lot of our people are paid from other sources anyway. Uh, but we've, we've tried to keep moving, and uh, we've done quite well so far. We'd like to keep it that way for next year. So this is the type of, of budget that I hope uh, we're going to see from all the different departments. Thank you, Rob. Um, I have um, a question again for Sabrina. Um, I think I've said this before many times. I'm not that familiar with municipal accounting. But would you please, if you can, explain how this budget uses the assessment rate? First of all, what assessment rate? So the assessment rate is something that has been uh, started with some very early discussions um, on setting a budget that would be based on the town's uh, assessment rate, which would be the general increases that could be expected from the budget, as opposed to just sort of throwing numbers out there that we could potentially tie into a sort of a, a set rate that if the uh, assessment this year is 23%, uh, then we know that is our number. If it is a bit lower or a bit higher, that's what we're basing our numbers on, which then would give a starting point for a budget to be approved at the board level, uh, as opposed to sort of the line by line that has been happening and, um, you know, just questioning where things are with the town. So, Although this is not something that the finance department or council has yet approved, nor the board has approved, it is a way that we began to look at this to say, if we were to follow suit um, with that being a sort of a method of budgeting in the future, that this is sort of a trial run. That said, there's two pieces to note. First of all, I did not take the full amount of what our assessment rate would have been. It actually would have been for expenses, $1,090. Um, and as you can see from our consolidated budget, we are at 933,000, uh, not including all the interfunctional uh, transfers. So we did stay below that level because I am well aware that in an era of COVID, uh, we didn't want to have any increases at all, so we maintained that. 
And then the second piece is that if we do um, choose, and there'll be more discussion at the board table and then eventually at the council table as well, if we do choose to request council to pass a bylaw for us to be following a assessment rate budget from year to year, then we would have to also clearly articulate that the, uh, the transfers, the interfunctional transfers specifically, are not part of that change uh, because that would actually be a significant decrease based on the town changing their accounting method. And we know that this interfunctional transfer is simply a change in accounting method. It is not a change in our budget. Dory, you have a question? Actually, I think I have uh, two or three. Um, so if I can keep the floor for a minute. Uh, I did want to ask what uh, funds exist in this budget for board initiatives. I know under our action plan, we had some discussion of things um, such as, well, continuing town hall meetings, which I know while they're done on Zoom, doesn't have a big expense, but uh, printing the annual report. So I'm just not sure I see in here where some of those things are budgeted. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Um, those would be in the budget. Uh, we still have the typical $5,000 board budget, uh, which is for all of the specific initiatives that are being handled, uh, and that falls under our administrative expenses. Additionally, we have put in the uh, strategic planning because we're now into our third year. And instead of having it all in the fourth year where all of the research and budget uh, work would be done on a strategic plan, the uh, Communication and Strategic Planning Committee identified an interest to have 2021 and 2022 uh, be able to split those funds so that some of that research could be done and, and community consultation could be done at the end of this year, uh, assuming in uh, fall of 2021, we're not limited by uh, COVID to have some kind of consultation. And if so, then finding other ways of doing community consultation. So those two budgets are in there that were requested by the board. Okay. Else, um, a couple more things. Yes. Um, my main concern, I think the budget is good and fine. I'm quite happy with it. My concern is the optics around it. And uh, Sabrina, you pointed out that we now appear to have a $1.35 million budget, which is almost a, well, it's a 400,000 plus increase over last year, or 2019 anyway, apparently. So I just think when we get to our key messages, we may want to um, point out some of the, the, the kind of accounting differences that are happening here. And that in terms of our true change in expenses, I think somewhere you say there's a, it's actually a decrease of um, what $1,425. So it's actually a quite a controlled budget. <laughs> yes. Um, I had um, one other sort of substantive thing I just wanted to ask about, and this is on um, page one, two, three, four, five of the budget. There's a chart called service service provided and level of service. And uh, I'm wondering, is there any value in having a comparative column that shows change over the previous year? So I'm not really sure if these are these are 2020 numbers estimated or are they 2019? Um, but I'm thinking if they're 2020, we might see quite a difference in um, uh, program attendance up or down, or we'll see uh, maybe increases in card holders for, you know, or higher eBooks. So I'm just curious if there's any value in terms of this budget of showing comparative to a previous year. So typically you are looking for the way all of the other departments are doing it. And I, I use that lightly because I do understand from the Public Libraries Act that the library itself is not a department, but in a taxation world, we compare as if we're another department. Um, they are using the previous year's service levels. So that's what we had done in the past. You are 100% right uh, that our service levels are going to change in 2020 and have. 
and I assume 2021, the budget that was developed is really developed to be a hybrid that we are able to move into another shutdown where services are still being provided virtually and through curbside and then able to open back up again if these types of things happen again uh, this year. Uh, assuming that we are looking at most of 2021 probably still being in uh, pandemic uh, reactionary uh, ways of providing service. Um, I certainly can add in a comparator if you think that would be something that would be helpful. It may also bring more questions of why are there differences because although our circulation numbers in print may be down, we still have our digital circulation, our programming numbers actually are significantly higher when you count how many people view something on Facebook or YouTube than were able to be in the room with us. So I think the numbers, there's no really successful way of putting these numbers out and I think this is going to play out on our annual report as well that it becomes very confusing trying to look at where some things plummet and some things increase. But at the same point, our staff are still doing the same type of work, just in various ways. Thank so you. I'm open to options with that. Yeah, thank you, Sabrina. Can you release the uh, document? Um, Sabrina, I have, uh, uh, Laurie, you've, you've got all your questions answered to this point? Um, my, I have- Maybe we come back to you, okay? Thank you. Yep. I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, come back to a little thing that I did raise before Laurie was speaking up. Now, first of all, Rob, you, um, you, made, you made a statement, better luck this time. Do you mind my asking what you mean by that? Or what you meant by that? Uh, yeah, uh, it's just that I, uh, I think this budget will will be more in line with what the rest of the town is doing. I think last year our, our percentage increase uh, was was probably higher. Well, it was a lot higher than anybody else. And I think that had, you know, Lori's mentioned optics, and I think that had bad optics for us. Uh, I think this one will will be a lot more in line with with where we're going with the rest of the town. And I was also going to, uh, to mention that, that we haven't, uh, I was going to ask Sabrina how we're addressing growth because we do uh, see increases that come from growth. But I think last year's budget, um, the way council responded to it, it was, it, we, we probably should have pared it down a little bit more. And I think this one is a little more reasonable. Um, I'm not sure if anyone will agree with me, but, but my, from my seat at the council table, that's, that's the way I look at it. Um, but I, I was going to ask Sabrina to, um, how are we addressing growth in this? And also, I think, uh, Lori, regarding your question about the optics um, and the increase, um, I, I think we're going to see that right across the town, so we're not going to stand out that way. Thank you. Let me if I interject for a minute. The, the noise you're hearing is my are my grass cutters. They come back every come by every so often. And so bear with me. Uh, Rob, you still haven't quite answered my question about a better luck this time. Well, all I meant was that we should be able this this I was just trying to be short form, but but I think that we have something that we can uh, take to council and say this is what we want to do this year and and they're not going to look at it as a big increase i think last year's budget was was more than a 30 percent am i wrong about that increase uh what from the previous year? Increase over what over the yeah. year before and i can respond to that mr chair yeah, so go ahead I'll, sabrina probably can explain the numbers the capital better. right the capital did have a large increase because we were asked to bring back all of the needs of the facilities and uh, we ended up with that 300,000 worth of capital costs for shelving and furniture and various needs in the building. Uh, that then does show on the budget, even though the 300 was proposed over uh, potentially three years, 
it showed up as being a very large spike increase. Um, what council did approve was the 100,000 and to bring back the next 200,000 in future years, um, which then because of COVID, we had been approved, but because of COVID then that also mm -hmm. fell off. Mm -hmm. So yes, when you look at the budget, it does appear that there was a much bigger ask because of that capital piece. Uh, this year, I opted not to reinsert those funds because I understand we are not in a position as a community to look at those types of needs right now. It doesn't mean they go away. Um, the furniture is still degrading, the shelves are still degrading, but we, we have put in a smaller portion which is of capital $52,500 to deal with a small portion of those this year. And instead of it being a three-year plan, it might be more like a six-year plan to get there, um, to get caught up of things that just hadn't been done for a decade prior. Um, so you are, are right, uh, Rob, that it was a spike based on that capital. The actual operating budget, though, did not have an increase. But when you looked at the bottom line for taxation and the bottom line of percentage increase, that 300000 in capital did read as if we had a very, very large increase to our budget. Thank you. Right. That's what I was referring to. Well, let, let, me, let me just bring this back to reality, Rob, if I may. I'm not pinpointing you specifically is in any way representing council. But what we're really talking about is what what Laurie raised, the roughly uh, $160,000 of operating expenses, never mind transfers and capital, capital costs, etc. I think last year we put in, as Sabrina said, put in a, a, a budget, a reasonable budget of operating costs excluding the capital side of it. This year we've done it again and very reasonable. Now with that in mind I still have a question for Sabrina because you cannot in my mind drop numbers casually. 23% of what Sabrina? The assessment rate has a set rate and it, it has rained, what year? Uh, the assessment rate for 2020 and my understanding is the 2021 assessment rate is not changing. Um, and that number is a 23, uh, which is what we would be looking at. Like I said, I did not go for the full uh, amount that was there because it would have been about a $60,000 increase for us. Yeah, and I wasn't prepared to argue when we're all trying to tighten up for all of the COVID needs to have that in there. Um, that does mean that there needs to be an understanding that we may also have our pandemic hours because it comes down to staffing, uh, that we're, we have to add more staff in to do contact tracing as long as we're informed to do that. And that might mean that there is a service change, uh, but this is not a permanent service change. Anything that we're doing right now will be reverting back when we're in a position with uh, the Gray Bruce Health Unit's approval to go back to a more regular service model. Yeah, but I'm still not understanding it. Maybe I'm very, very obtuse in this thing. You're using the 2020, well, I say you and the town people have used the 2020 assessment rate. As, what, is it, what are we being assessed for? Well, so what that, is our assessment? Uh, uh, that may be actually something better handled. Rob may be able to answer that. Yeah, I was, uh, we we operate like all municipalities in Ontario with the Municipal uh, Property Assessment Corporation, MPAC. Yes. yes, yes. Short. They uh, provide an assessed value for every property in the province, and they update that every so often. It was supposed yep. to ha happen, I think, in 2019. It got delayed and then got delayed again because of COVID. So we are we are still using what are frankly our outdated numbers, which they they uh, sort of estimate. We know that our property values are probably higher than than even they uh, say. We also know there's going to be a lot of growth this coming year. So that's why I was asking Sabrina earlier about uh, are we including anything to do with growth in here because we we already think there are going to be more than 200 more kids at the school. Let's uh, stay on subject. Sure. So my my point is, 
that when you talk about assessment, assessment is based on the value of properties. Uh, as soon as you have more people living here, you have more properties being assessed. And so that spreads the tax burden out. So Sabrina is stuck with trying to address all of that as she's putting together the budget, as is everybody in, in the town. Uh, and, and we don't really know all the answers to that just yet. I hope we will soon. Uh, but when she says that we're, we're looking at, at the outdated assessed values, that's what we're talking about is, is the, the assessment that comes to us from MPAC. Uh, and, and Sabrina, you, you mentioned 23%. So I'm assuming you, you mean that, that that's what the uh, rate that we're looking at for this year. Thank you, Rob. In other words, if I may nutshell that, it was decided to take the value of the Ellie Shore building plus the, uh, the Heritage Depot, the, the assessed value of that, and we, we were, whatever no. the figure is. Mr. Chair, that, that is actually the assessment rate of increases across the town. So if there is an ex expectation that the town has an increase on the overall town of Blue Mountains um, property taxes that would, they're not raising taxes, but they know that they're going to have an increase in revenue because assessment values have gone up for individual homes. So depending on what that rate is on an increase from year to year, that would be informed not by council specifically, but by uh, the impact to be able to tell council your rate is increased by a specific number and then we all have that sort of same playing field that we're working within. So that would tell us that we have growth that we need to make um, and we have the ability to have a budget that is in step with our assessment values. Yeah, so if I was to look at last year's budget even though we spent more money, we were able on our town taxes, not taking into account county and education tax, but just on what we spent as a town, we actually gave, we actually dropped the tax rate for the town by a small amount. And that's because when you factor in the growth, uh, we're, we're spreading the pie over more people. So that means that, that each, each household pays a little bit less. So uh, when we're talking about assessed value, we're not, in fact, there's no assessed value, I think, for the library and the, and the depot because they don't pay taxes, they're institutional. Uh, but we're talking about assessment, we're talking about what you have when you get your assessment notice every year, uh, that's what you use to determine your property taxes. And that's the assessment that we're talking about. Now you have me thoroughly confused. So if I may on this one, Mr. Chair, we will have many more conversations on if we choose to promote doing the assessment rate as our means forward. It will not happen if it does at all until the 2022 budget. If we choose to do that, the stages would be me bringing back a report to this board, uh, the finance department making a presentation to this board, conversations with council, uh, the board would have to pass a resolution. Council would have to pass a bylaw, which means the whole bylaw process of council with notice given. So we are months, if not a year away from that step. But I did want to bring it up, even though I know it is confusing at this point with just a little bit of information, that it is something that is being looked at as a way of giving the board a more autonomy that you are saying the budget has sort of been pre-selected by council, the number when they tell us what the assessment rate is, and then the board makes the decision on where those lines go. Um, so it is less of a reporting back and forth of asking for the budget because the number could simply be determined by this process. Um, so we have to make decisions on that and it may be best to defer that portion of the discussion from the budget now so that we can move forward with this budget knowing that there will be lots more on that topic coming if we choose to go there. And that is exactly what I was scared of, that <laughs> the town was dictating how much we could spend for operating. 
based on their formula. Whereas the old way, the old, old way was, well, last year we spent $100,000, we'll stick it up to 10%. That was the old, old way. I mean, really old. Last year you did zero, zero based budgeting, which was a tremendous success. It didn't pass council, but they didn't recognize all the, all the factors and that's for the benefit of uh, whatever. Um, so it's really confusing when you tell me that you're, you're trying this year, you uh, and the town people are trying to use the assessment rate, but it may be one, two or three years before that decision is made by council. So why would we use that now? Why would we not just come up with our own um, operating budget? This is 100% my budget, Mr. Chair. That, that I'll accept. I will accept that. Okay. It's definitely not influenced by the town at all. Uh, no, I mean, it is a team process. We work closely with the team to make sure that we're in step with what is happening. We never want to wind up in front of council and be so offside with the budget that it's just not going to even be entertained. Uh, so we, we certainly are working closely with the town, but it was developed by the managers, by myself, uh, on what it is we need to do with the funds here to have the best services that our town is paying for. Good. Now, I've sort of monopolized the conversation with Rob and I, perhaps, but does anyone else have any other questions or comments to make on this subject? Uh, sorry, I forgot the hand. Uh, Gary, yes. I going to say, Mr. Chair, that I think uh, uh, Sabrina's budget is the temp Can you uh, raise your volume? Parameter. I can't hear you. Um, uh, might should be on. No? I'm unmuted. Is that, can you hear? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'll All right. Keep going. I'll, I'll try to speak up. I'm just saying that uh, I, I view what Sabrina's done with the, uh, the idea of moving to the assessment figure is, is using it as a sort of a parameter. I guess. I mean, we know we've got growth issues in the library coming forward and that was part of the budget uh, uh, last year for, for, for to, to meet um, you have more people coming into the town more use of the library more size required etc so, 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 so i just see it as a parameter i think it makes sense i think the budget uh, is very uh, fitting with, with the covid uh, world uh, where we're basically you know, pretty much flat lines and, and adjusting the hours. So, uh, those would be my comments, Mr. Chair, if that helps. Thank you. Uh, Laurie, you have uh, your hand up? Uh, yes, I am uh, not sure I heard an answer to Rob's question on whether the budget addresses growth. Sorry, that's my clock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the bell was tolling for thee, but <laughs> so how does uh, does the budget address growth? I guess is my question then. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this year the budget does not address growth significantly. Not as much as it probably should, uh, but again, there is just that awareness that if we were to show how much we are growing year by year, uh, both through shown through our assessment as well as the, the piece that is not going to be shown by assessment. And that is the many people who had multiple residents who have opted to stay here full time. We are having more usage as a result of that. Um, the only growth that we have from our collections would be some internal shifting. So we've made decisions to do more of our virtual materials, our electronic materials being purchased over uh, slightly decreasing some of the print, understanding that the 21, we are probably going to be again in a hybrid service model. Um, and some people may choose just not to want to venture out into the world and want more electronic materials. And then our typical inflation rate that we have on to all of the contracts that we really have no, um, no control over how much the book rates are from year to year. What we did not do 
and you are correct on that, Lori, is we did not take into account how our community has grown physically into a price point per materials and per service that we should be increasing. Um, but again, I think that's something that will um, will help when we're when we're ready to start talking about maybe connecting to an assessment level that it doesn't have to be something that we track as much in the budget because it would just be automatically having those those understood increases that everybody in the town has to have. Water treatment has to have the same type of increase because it's understood you've built something, you now need to serve the population that you have accepted to build here. So for this year, um, cautiously, we have not made the increases that we should have because of COVID. Thank you, Sabina. <laughs> Rob, sorry, uh, Lori, uh, uh, hang on, Rob. Lori, you, you, you have something else? That's what they, do, do, does that come through in the material you've put together? Because I don't think it came through very clearly to me. I can make that a caveat within that explains that we are opting not to uh, include growth in 2020 so that it's identified that in 22, if we're looking at a number that maybe makes people think, why is there not a, you know, why did you have a bigger increase in 22 that we're showing that we did not do that between the two years and in fact actually limited some portions of our budget. I think that's important because I think uh, historically, and Rob just pointed this out, we had a, what, a $300,000 capital increase last year, which was really an accumulation of things not done in previous years. So it looks like a big hit. So I'd like to make sure that we kind of get ahead of that issue by saying we are not tackling growth in this budget precisely because we understand the financial straits um, and uh, uh, in, caused by COVID and we're sort of letting that money go by and not even asking council as a supportive move but making sure that that's clear so that if it comes up in a year or two from now we don't get penalized because we're having a big jump. Thank you Laurie, well said. Uh, uh, Sabrina if I may just follow up on what Laurie is saying. Um, would this mean a, a change in the wordage that you're putting, you're suggesting you put forward? I will include that in the early documentation pages of it. Yes, it won't change the numbers, but in Not the, the numbers, explanation. Please, but the explanation, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And Rob, you have your hand up, you're still. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make, uh, it's sort of the point that you just made, uh, but <clears throat> Um, I think that will be refined as we get closer and closer. We're not going to be doing final numbers until we get closer to the end of the year. Uh, so we'll maybe have a better idea by then. Uh, but I also wanted to, when I mentioned growth, I, I meant, and Sabrina did address it, uh, the numbers of people who are moving here who already have a home here. So they're not, it's not a new building, but they're more people. We, we're maybe asked to provide more services and how are we going to address that? And uh, that we're going to have to look at uh, as we get closer and, and finalize the budget. So I think Sabrina's addressed it, but the numbers, I, I think we do, I think Lori's right, we do have to include some worded, some words in the early version of this so that everybody is aware. Although I suspect that we're gonna see that from the other departments of the town as they bring their budgets into that they're going to be addressing the same thing. Thank you, Rob. Lori? Um, it does take me back to the question I asked a while ago about adding that column under the level of service that addresses changes since the, I guess you're saying what's currently here is 19, 2019 levels and showing some differences in levels. But I guess the difficulty with that is what year to use um, because things change so much in March. So I, I will, I'll drop it if you say, that would be such a nightmare, we can't really do it. Um. <laughs> they they I, hope to eventually get, get caught up to where we are dealing with current year. And, and that's not us, that's impact. Okay. Uh, Joanne? Oh. Yes. Hello, I thought you had your hand up. No. No? No, Does just my else... Does anyone else have any 
comments or questions, now is the time to ask because if, uh, if I read this thing correctly, uh, Sabrina, w whatever we approve today, if we approve something today, it goes to council and we don't really have any um, second thoughts or whatever on it. Is that right? Once it's approved today, it will be released to council. Um, it'll probably take me a day just to do some final cleanup and get it off to them tomorrow, and it will be in the budget package at that point. The numbers won't change. At least they, they will not. I understand that. It's the, the, the point that Laurie brought up about using 2019 numbers in there is a wee bit confusing. The, the, the statement you want to make or you're thinking of making to, to, to point out that this is a no growth budget for this year, but expect the, expect the growth in future years. But Laurie, I think you have something else to say, which is good. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you think so, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, actually, what I have left are really um, the kind of cleanup things you just mentioned, Sabrina. Um, so the very th small minor things, on that same chart I've been talking about, there's programs offered, it says seven comma 26. And I think that might be 7,260 with a zero dropped or something of that sort. So there's a correction, tiny correction there. On the following page, under non-financial statistics, I think you've used the word process where you meant province. Thank you. And then the last one is on the um, capital program page under furniture replacement. And I believe the chart expects you to put in some wording under select expenditure and the account number, which is legal, that says blank. So those are just, I guess, misses in, in form filling here. And those, that's the end of everything Thank I have to say. <laughs> and I just, uh, there will be a public comment period as we go through the budget. So make sure you're paying attention and I'll try to remember to, to let you know. And at that point, you may want to support the library budget because you are the champions for the library as, as am I. So you can do it then too. Any other comments from anyone? Dorothy, you've been quiet. Jesse, you've been quiet. Uh, a very important subject, yeah, you know. I'm uh, listening and learning. That's good. We all yeah, have. Really, I appreciate the statement uh, or Lori's point to add the um, commentary that this is not a growth year. I think that will be very helpful to rely upon in upcoming years. Good. Thank you. Joanne, anything to say? No. Okay. Jesse? No, I, uh, there's a lot in the budget which we can't change. In fact, the majority of the items are pretty much fixed. Salaries are largely fixed. So I think that, I think that Sabrina has done about the best she could do to keep the numbers within proper boundaries. And uh, as, as best I can understand it, and I'm not a much of a numbers guy, uh, best as I can understand it, I think it's probably a, an acceptable budget. Are you ready for the question? I'm ready. I need <clears throat> to move the recommended um, motion under F1. Can I have a mover? Joanne? Joanne's a, mo a seconder. Uh, Dorothy? All in favor? Just for your benefit, I will read that motion again, since we, I should perhaps have done that. You are moving that this board approve this proposed the Blue Mountains Public Library Board Consolidated Budget for 2021 for release to the Town of Blue Mountains Finance Department and for inclusion in the, 20, the TBM 2021 budget uh, document. Um, moved by Joanne and uh, seconded by Dorothy. All in favor? Uh, Dorothy, your hand's not up, Dorothy, but I assume you're, you're, you're moving for it. Anyone against? There we go. 
was that against? Oh, you just stroked your hair, were you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm you, good. You raised your hand and thought you were against it. Okay. Timing is everything. Pardon? Timing is everything. Conflicting messages. I, I see a majority. The, the motion is carried. Yes. <clears throat> now I can shut up. Um, moving along, if I may, um, into item G, the strategic plan updates. Joanne, you haven't had any meeting uh, since the last board meeting. Uh, that is a big pardon? Yes, that is correct. No meeting. Dorothy, you have your hand raised. Oh, for Pete's sake. Sorry. No, it was on lower hand. <laughs> okay, oh. my hand is in my lap, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should retract, this is an aside, I think we should retract this going live business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it's, Sabrina's good enough to move on to item G2. And Laurie, you have the chair. Thank you. Uh, there isn't too much of a report to make here. The only item the uh, committee discussed was the board evaluation questionnaire. And we made a few minor revisions from the version that we did last year. And uh, so you can expect to receive it in a survey monkey uh, format following the October meeting with a couple of weeks to get it back to us. And then it will come to the November board meeting for discussion. And uh, that's really all I have to say. Thank you very much. Moving on, Dorothy. I have a comment in that. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I wasn't watching. It's, it's just actually a, a typo, I think. In the uh, second sentence of the second paragraph, I think the word is it, not I. <laughs> yes, it will be sent. Sabrina, yes. will you I don't plan traveling with a monkey. <laughs> we will make those edits. Thank you, Jesse. That was, yeah. Uh, Dorothy, moving on to item G3. You are not, you have, now have the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, as you can see, a lot of discussion around what is planned for the virtual town hall on September 28th. Uh, we identified some areas for potential discussion. My understanding from Sabrina is that we have not had any feedback from the community uh, for additional points of interest. So uh, if, if you of any of the board have um, something they'd like noted, uh, that would be appreciated. We are, um, our meeting is next Tuesday to discuss any further input to the virtual town hall. And then as Sabrina referenced in the budget discussions, uh, we are looking at community consultation for the strategic plan and a number of ways to solicit that input. Um, and finally, because Odine has left us, uh, we do have a seat vacant. Um, Lori and I, and, and uh, with Sabrina's assistance, are prepared to carry on until November when the other appointments take place. But if someone would like to volunteer to be on for the next couple of months, we appreciate the company. And that is, uh, that is about it. If I may, Mr. Chair, just one edit to that. Uh, at the time of the uh, report, we did list Friday as being the deadline for comments. I have uh, put out social media moving that to Monday. Just because we haven't received any, I figured we would give it as long as we could. And the committee is then meeting Tuesday morning. Thank you. Any volunteers for that position? Okay, thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Um, sorry, um, Sabrina, I think you you look after G4. Uh, unless there are questions, I don't have a lot to add onto this. I mean, obviously our hours are reduced, uh, but we are also really tracking the way people are working 
um, with sort of their new pandemic lifestyles. Uh, we did make changes to our hours at Ellie Shore uh, from August to September, and that again was based on feedback from community members and just watching where the peak times were and where the lower times were. We're still maintaining 15 people in the building, so when we found that there was sort of a crunch time, we tried to stretch out those hours. Um, outside of that, our military heritage is a big one, and I'm going to leave that to our uh, museum curator who's going to be speaking shortly. Um, we are open at the depot and she will also be letting you know about that piece. And I think that really is uh, key for the items that are on there that haven't already been duplicated elsewhere. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Okay, and you want to um, keep going with your um, the action plan updates, Serena? I will. So our action plan, we are at 64%. Although I don't see having major achievement issues for the close of 2020, we all say that with a grain of salt because we still can't say what's going to happen tomorrow in the province and in our region. Uh, so just understanding that we do feel that we will meet, but there's always a chance that things will continue to play out with COVID that impact us further. Um, I don't really have any major uh, announcements on here. I think we've been watching as each of the committees and the staff have been ticking off all of these objectives for the year. So unless there are actual questions, I think I don't really have anything else to add. Any questions? Okay, we can move back to Dorothy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, yeah, we did meet and thank you, Morris, for joining the committee to um, discuss the added layer to the CEO Evaluation Planning Committee. Sure? Uh, we had a discussion about who we would select as key community members from whom to solicit input and we decided, um, kind of came full circle and, and uh, with, the, with the two people that we had selected. Uh, we've drafted some questions. Uh, we have some input from the committee members with uh, amendments to that. So once they're finalized, we will be uh, sending them out uh, via SurveyMonkey, I expect, um, for the convenience of those people. And uh, we will be then folding that feedback into the CEO performance evaluation. Thank you. Any questions of uh, Dorothy? Oops. Okay. Thank you very much for that report. Now, moving Thank on you. to um, the next page. <clears throat> I'd overlooked this, as a matter of fact, um, but I'm very, very nice to see Andrea here. Andrea, you're down to give us a, an update on the Heritage Depot. Through you, Mr. Chair, thank you for inviting me today. We have a lot to share. And um, the first thing I wanna share is about our event coming up. So if it's possible that we could have our little promo shown now by... Craig Leith Heritage Depot presents A new digital exhibit. About our community. And our military heritage. Capturing family history. Capturing history for the future. Our Military Heritage. Exhibit launch September 19th. Um, so that was our promo. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, that was our promo for the event, which is happening on Saturday at the uh, Canadian Legion 281 in Clarksburg. And we are partnering 
uh, with the Legion and the town is providing us uh, with outdoor tents and um, all of the COVID-19 requirements that we have to have an event uh, that brings the community together. So this event is to um, share with the community what we've been working on uh, pretty much since um, March. We received funding from Veterans Affairs Canada to help us to digitize our military collection in the museum. And we also were able to go out into the community and digitize private collections and bring it forward. So that part of the project <coughs> is um, just one thing <laughs> that needs to be done, the digitization. And so we had two of our staff working on that um, basically since March. And then on our end, uh, we've been doing the research, the writing, and the uploading of this to our platform, um, which is uh, on our, our, our library website. And we've been uploading material um, all summer, and we, can we'll, we will continue to do that because the digitization of the material which has been done, it takes equally if not more time to upload this material. Um, so we, we had originally planned to do our launch uh, in October, but we've moved it up due to COVID-19. And I'm pleased that we are because things definitely are changing. So um, the exhibit itself will continue to grow. It's not a static thing. It's not something like you would come into the museum, that's the exhibit, that is what you're going to see. This exhibit will be a collaborative um, activity between ourselves and our community. And what we found is that uh, we've connected to members of our community that now live around the world. And they've been helping us um, to track down and find resources to bring back to the town of the Blue Mountains, to our community to share. And that's been really quite remarkable. And uh, we've learned a lot, not just about our military heritage, but about other subjects as well. And uh, it, it's just like a, a thread being pulled. <laughs> and it just connects to so many places. So on Saturday, we're going to be um, showing what, what we have produced so far, talking about the many stories that link our heritage together through a military lens. And um, it's not just about um, the men and women who went off to serve in this incredible gift of public service, but it's also about the community that was here that supported them during this time and how those men and women came back and made changes in our community as well, because everybody who did serve what were changed and um, they brought back with uh, them uh, a, a different sense of uh, community and duty. And, and we really see those changes. So when you come to the event, um, you're going to be given your own set of rations as your little treats for the event. And you can either have military rations or Red Cross rations um, that were given to servicemen who were prisoners of war. And you'll get a sense of what that was like through some of the objects that will be at your tables at the event. So I'll be speaking about the program, about the project, about our history. And, uh, but we'll also have a lot of family members there and we're hoping people can connect with us about this event. Um, we'll, we will have four uh, dignitaries coming to speak as well. We have um, Mayor Sover, um, uh, Warden McQueen, um, M MP, um, and MPP, uh, Jim Wilson and uh, Terry Dowdsall. Dowdall, sorry. <laughs> and um, we're just hoping to bring a, a knowledge of this project to the community so that they can continue to share with us and we can continue to grow this, this information. So it's about the, you know, the poetry that was written during the war. It's, uh, it's about uh, the, the agricultural changes during that time and it's about the people who served. So it'll be quite a, a, a unique experience and uh, something that I hope, um, I know a lot of you are coming, so I hope uh, you can share that with uh, your friends and family if you want to bring anyone along. We are um, 
socially distancing at this event and we're keeping our numbers under the uh, required amount uh, by the government. And um, it's going to seem a little strange because we're going to be very separate and apart while I give this program. And um, during the program, there'll be a chance to uh, visit through the Legion and also visit with our staff to see the work that was done behind the scenes for this. And um, we've been getting a huge uptake of people um, connecting with us this week leading up to the event and providing us more resources. So it's been a really incredible place where the community has come together. And I think it's not just because of COVID that we're connecting through online resources, but we're really connecting um, personally through phone calls and and uh, we are getting people dropping things off here to the museum as well. So it's a, a pretty exciting project and we're pleased to bring it forward and also to show off the museum collection. And that's my second video is just to give you an example of the artifacts that we have in the collection that don't get seen very often. And if Hannah, if you can just bring that uh, next video up, that would be great. This is a handmade, hand embroidered, basket shaped piece of needlework, a bag made by Mary Naomi Beard. And she summered in the town of the Blue Mountains uh, in, at her cottage. And our records state that she created this during World War II in the 1940s. Her son was in the Navy during World War II and she would send her knitting to him. And you can see that in the middle here, there is a metal eyelet where she would have been able to pull her yarn through. See other photos, military records of veterans, and more in our Military Heritage online exhibits. We also invite you to register to join us for our free Our Military Heritage exhibit launch Saturday, September 19th, 2 to 4 p.m. Find out more details at thebluemountainslibrary.ca forward slash military. Thank you, Hannah. Does anybody have any questions? Andrea, uh, was that World War II only or World War I as well? Our military heritage takes us from the 19th century to, to today. Oh. So we talk about uh, why we started to create a military uh, units in, and it was due to the Fenian raids and the um, Trent affair. And so people started to create militias and our, our community ended up being part of Collingwood, uh, the village of Collingwood's um, militia and then over towards Meaford. And then finally they decided, no, we'll create our own in Clarksburg. And they created um, number seven company, developed a large drill shed, drill, drill grounds, and um, that became the fairgrounds. And that drill shed was um, updated by the federal government just before the First World War and made into quite a spectacular building. It's no longer there, um, but that's where we start um, our military heritage and we take it all the way up to today. Um, we don't, we, we know we have resources coming relating to the Korean War and rate and relating to um, military members who live in our community now who are involved in a lot of other current actions. So we are going to grow that throughout all of those uh, generations. And on that, we, just, we do have families of generations of, of um, military service as well. And it's, it's men and women. Thank you. Bob? Uh, thank you. And I just, uh, I'm really happy to hear about uh, people connecting uh, because this is the kind of thing the depot needs to do all the time. And, and this is a great way to get people to take a more of a, an ownership of the depot as their, uh, their museum. Uh, the old military museum, I'm sure a lot of you remember it when it was in the Marsh, where the Marsh Street Center is now. You saw a picture of Mrs. Crosskill standing out in front of it. She was, she was when I was around, she was the, the curator. Uh, and it's unfortunate that a lot of that collection went away especially the things related to uh, to uh, Colonel Perks, or just, sorry, Major Perkins, uh, and, and a few other things like that. But um, at, at least we're, we're making some headway on, on uh, 
recognizing this important part of the local story. If you, when I was the newspaper editor and I would go through old editions of the paper, and it was amazing to me how connected everyone was to to the military at that time. Everybody was doing, and that was interesting to see that knit bag because that's what people were doing at home. And even in places like Thornbury and Clarksburg, people were knitting socks, children were collecting pennies. Uh, there were all kinds of things going on. So it's, it's neat to see that part, the home front uh, as part of it too. So great to see Andrea and I'm really looking forward to, to uh, Saturday. Thanks Rob. Thanks Rob. And uh, Andrea, thank you, anything else? Um, just on what Rob said, uh, we, we have done other exhibits. We did one with the um, um, Beaver Valley Fall Fair, and that too has had a huge impact. It's, we're, we're generating a lot of um, storytelling through that exhibit, and we're really pleased to bring that one forward as well. Um, we have a number of online exhibits that are really tracking high, highly. And of course, the highest one that st we still can't beat is uh, Willy Winkles, um, because we're getting traction to that exhibit around the world. But I have to say, um, with the military exhibit, uh, online exhibit, we are getting use around the world as well. And we're getting use from researchers who are writing their own books. And some of our stories are going to show up in books on Dieppe, in books on the, um, on the uh, Italian campaign. And I connected with those researchers some of them I connected with back in 2016. And so this is, the, these things take time to get moving, uh, mostly it, it, with the support of the Veterans Affairs Canada to give us the funding for digitization, because that is a key thing. So I'm really glad to bring that forward. And, um, and I'm excited to see um, even more use when people start to get to know it and share it as well. So thank you very much for letting me bring this forward to you today. Good. Thank you, Andrea. That was, that was good. We look forward to Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> we, we might be in good time, Jesse, if uh, you're in a rush. No. Um, <laughs> sorry. Can you share just an update on um, the CHD as well, the building? So the building is now open. Uh, it opened for library pickups only uh, on August 30th, and in early October, as soon as uh, the depot team has finished this event, we will have a better timeline of when the museum portion will be opening, but that should be in early October. Um, just so you know, we have gone through the uh, Gray Bruce Health Unit for approval of both buildings opening plans. Uh, Ellie Shore had a obviously different plan than CHD. Uh, CHD's plan is to look at the building in zones. So there are three zones in the building and that is the entry, which is now library area, the general museum area that you would think of, the main gallery and the turret room, and then down the stairs is the research room, which is our third area. So each of those specific zones People can enter and exit wearing their masks, but they will not be physically distanced when they're in each of those spaces because it's only one group at a time. So we'll be able to take people into the museum. Um, if it's a family, they can you know, bring the whole family. We don't have to worry about physical distancing then because it's part of a family. And then when they've finished, then we'll do a cleanup of the area and then the next group can come in. So uh, the team will be announcing soon when the opening day will be for museum services and tours again. And then we will start booking <clears throat> tours as well as having drop-in. So the drop-in is you know, at your own risk that we may not have an availability for you, uh, but uh, we'll be sort of working both of those as we move forward. So we're really excited that the depot will be full strength within the month. Good, thank you. Uh, Sabrina, weren't you also going to comment at this stage on what happened with the our discussion a while ago about remedial costs being picked up by the town? Yes. So in that case, most of them we were able to fold in um, to the town's budget on the emergency services. Some of those pieces we did end up putting under our own budget. Um, for museum areas, uh, things that were 
painting the floors and the walls, which help when the building is empty to keep mold spores from growing. Those are pieces that the town didn't pick up, but we ended up putting them under our uh, basement renovation project, which we had for shelving. It meant that we purchased a few less of the mobile shelves and we actually uh, used some that we had and purchased some equipment to retrofit them. So we've been able to pull everything within budget. Um, there are some pieces that are still needed that we'll be working with the town uh, that were ordered and we're not sure where they're going to fall, but they're minor pieces um, having to do with ongoing testing. Uh, and then we're also working, Andrea, myself, uh, the depot team, and then the emergency team through the town to create some new policies and procedures that are dealing with how people are actually accessing the building. So how the janitorial staff are cleaning the building and it's, they're not our staff, they're the town provides those. So we write the policy, the procedure, we then give that to the town and then the town will then make sure that their staff are, are working within that. Um, we'll have some other procedures as well on how to uh, conduct air quality testing and what's going to be needed moving forward again to make sure that we're keeping a healthy building so we never get there again. Thank you. And you're satisfied that the town are doing their part? I, I believe that the town has done um, the bulk of what needed to be done. There are some pieces that we'll be working on, I'm sure, sure. for the next year. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyone else, any questions about the, um, the Heritage Depot? No? Okay, moving on to the round table. I've got three items here and I never know how to handle these things. I, I do think that item two, the military history, Devon, et cetera, has been discussed, or not discussed, has been explained very well by Andrea. What about the community updates and news? Anything, anyone got any, anything to add in there? No? Right. Uh, I do have one. Yep. Um, obviously, Oktoberfest yep. is uh, following the Our Military History launch. I know they are still accepting uh, ticket purchases through the Marsh Street, and that will be supporting Marsh Street Center, who has been hit uh, quite terribly during uh, the COVID uh, situation with uh, loss of fundraising and loss of sales. Uh, so anybody who is interested in purchasing tickets, certainly that is a great way after the our, mis our military history to stick around and have a beer and some bratwurst. Uh, the other one that I have is the Leisure Activity Plan Survey. That is open uh, through the uh, town's website. I have linked it onto the agenda, uh, which was the updated agenda that went out uh, yesterday with the updated budget. Um, importantly for board members, you are members of this community and the leisure activity plan is looking at library and museum services. So if we have nobody talking about library and museum services, it's hard to argue why we need to be considered in both this plan and this plan is informing the master facilities plan. And it is a bit of a catch 22 because many community members don't think of Blue Mountains Public Library, Craig Leith Heritage Depot Museum as being services provided by the town. They think of them as being independent through the board, but we know that the tax dollars are all the same. It's one community. So because of that, we do need our board members, uh, A, to fill in the survey yourselves. Um, last I saw, there were only about 103 people who have completed it, uh, and B, to promote it to people that you know. So that, uh, not that we want to saturate it, you know, unrealistically with library and museum, but it should be a natural piece of what people are thinking of from the recreation bit. And we do know that that doesn't always happen because they think of it as being different than the town. Thank you. I have a question for Rob. Maybe, maybe it's an unfair question. Have you any idea when this uh, master facilities plan might uh, come to fruition? Are we talking this year, uh, next year, the year after, or what? I, I, I think the plan is, I don't know the exact time, but I know it is for next year uh, to, to get it finished. Everything's fallen behind because meetings haven't been going on, but as far as I know, we're still looking to have this ready for next year. And in fact, we're trying to kick all our committees, not this one in particular, but uh, all the committees uh, to, 
to get things done for next year. Uh, there are a number of plans that are supposed to come. So uh, that's coming. But to reiterate what, what Sabrina said, uh, by all means, fill out the survey, get your friends and family to fill out the survey, uh, because it's all going to be about hubs in the future. And we need to make sure that we're, that is the depot and the library are part of the hub in, in uh, whatever comes down the pike. So uh, by all means, make sure you're filling out those surveys. Good, thank you, Rob. Um, sorry, Laurie, you have, your hand is up. Yes, I've got that one. <laughs> in two ways, my hand is up. <laughs> um, I did complete the uh, survey and I just want to say I found it a bit discouraging because there wasn't a single example um, of the library anywhere in the survey. Everything was, you know, sports fields or it was all clearly physically, physical activity oriented. And uh, it's only because I have some familiarity with the, what the town is doing that I, and Sabrina's email saying, well, by the way, this is about the library too, that you would even guess that. And I don't expect you're going to get much feedback from the community about libraries because it sounds like it's more about bike paths and tennis and a swimming pool and things like that than it is about a library. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a bit late. Um, but it's too bad we didn't have more input to actually the, how the way it was constructed so the library was even just an example here and there. Well, good, good point, good point. I'll, I'll actually take that back and ask them to, you know, what they might be able to do about it because you're right, it is, it is kind of late. But to be honest, since I'm a member of council, I'm not supposed to fill out the survey. So uh, <laughs> even though I'm telling everyone else to do it. So, but I will uh, speak to Tim Henry and, and see what else we can do about that. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, my hand is up. Where, oh, there it is. Yes, I see it, Jesse. Where does the survey, how does one access the survey? I've received no survey forms. The survey was listed on the town's e-blast. Uh, I believe it was two days ago that I saw the most recent one. We also have cards in different places. Uh, we do have them at the library. Um, I will send you out another link to that, uh, Jesse. Uh, it also is in the agenda, the updated agenda from this meeting as roundtable number four, Leisure's Activity Plan Survey, which you can click on. I didn't see that, thank you. Okay, good. Um, I'm not sure, do we need um, to actually receive all this information or is it obvious we, obvious we received it? Still need to receive it. May I have someone move that we receive the information that we discussed in this round table discussion? Rob, it's a mover and Jesse a seconder? Second. All in favor? Thank Mr. You. Chair, we did miss one item, uh, H2, Trustee Council number three meeting. Oh, did we, for, did that? Oh. That was on the updated agenda that went out yesterday. Oh, I, I must confess I missed that. Yes, thank you. Tell me about that. So Trustee Council number three, um, these are the ones that we typically go somewhere twice a year and one or two council or one or two board members are sent. Jesse attended in the spring and that was the first one that they had done virtually as a result of COVID. So this will again be uh, for our region and it will be virtual. Unlike what they did last time, it was everybody in the province. They've gone back to being smaller groups so that uh, this will just be our region. So there'll be about 20 library board members in attendance and that way there can actually be some conversation, um, although it's still a bit more difficult in Zoom to do uh, conversations virtually. Uh, the date for that is Saturday, November 7th, and it is 9.30 to noon. Uh, if people are prepared to say if they're interested in going, then we can do the resolution for that today. And if not, then I can bring that back to the next meeting. So November 7, it's a Saturday, 9.30 to noon, and they're usually quite prompt with finishing. They probably also won't take the full time. Yeah. At least the last year, last spring. Are there any volunteers, someone who'd like to um, dial into this virtual meeting? With virtual meetings, there's no coffee and muffins, which is a real downer for me. 
Good point. Lori, you have your hand up was it in this on this discussion of this. Uh, sorry, no, just forgot to take it down after. Uh, That's perfectly uh, okay. <laughs> I forget. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Sabrina. Let's bring it up again at the um, October meeting. Plenty of time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, we are moving on to key messages. Um, I read all those key messages. Uh, does anyone have any comment, questions, or suggestions about the key messages that uh, Sabrina has su suggested? I will bring them up, and I also have one that was added um having to do with the new budget oh okay give me one second there we go so um unless there were questions on the ones that were there first i'm not sure if that is clear or if anybody's faces are in the way um, but I do have uh, one that was added having to do with the update to the budget and specifically explaining uh, interfunctional transfers in case people were unsure about that piece. Mine is actually um, partially obscured. I don't know if it's possible just to read it. Certainly, let me, <laughs> I can't read half of it myself. Okay, so uh, the draft budget for 2020. Pardon? I can read it now. Now that you've oh. shrunk it, I can read it. You know, Well, two, two people raised their hands. I'm not sure who's first. But Laurie, I heard you before, so you go first, please. Mine are, uh, mine's not about this edition, which I'm okay with. I uh, yeah. simply noticed that we have window shopping and holds pickup. And uh, the topic seems to appear three times. And I think probably the first two examples can disappear. So yeah, that one you're at right now, that can just be deleted. Um, and then there's the next one down, I, and the, there was one further down as well, but I don't know whether there still is. There, there yeah. it is. Again. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. You definitely wanted to get that top again, didn't you? <laughs> I guess so. This is what happens when we merge things. Um, Oops. <clears throat> so I think the other one is more updated anyways. This one is more updated. Okay, that looks after that, uh, Laurie. It does, thank, thank you. Thank you for the catch. Okay. Now, go back to the, oh, sorry. Some, I can't see. Some people uh, raised their hands about the budget uh, thingy. Okay, does anyone raise their hands now about this, this statement? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have my hand raised, but not about that particular item, so. Well, okay, go ahead with what you have. I well, I just, uh, I thought the, the library staff and the museum staff have done a terrific job of keeping things 
going through social media and I didn't see a lot of mention about those programs here and I uh, the crafts program and I'm trying to think of the bedtime stories program uh, <clears throat> those those have all been great and I think uh, the more maybe some more should be made of it maybe uh, whatever information is available or at least where people can get information uh, because I think that's really a good news story that's been going on during the pandemic and uh, uh, you guys deserve to uh, to to make a, a little noise about it. Certainly I will add that into this section. Okay. Thank you Sabrina, thank you Rob. Uh, who else? Is someone else? No? Okay, any other comments on the key messages? <coughs> any other changes? May I have someone approve the, um, make a motion to approve the release of these key messages? Joanne uh, makes the motion, seconder. No, oh, I've got three options. Gary, how about, would you like to second it? Sure. Yeah. Gary seconded, all in favor? Against? Take your hands down. <laughs> Carry it. Okay, uh, with no closed meeting. Our next dates. Well, I'm just going to go through these and you can interrupt at any time. The town hall meeting, September the 28th at 7 o'clock. It's a virtual town hall meeting. And the communications and St strategic planning committee meeting, September the 22nd. Um, again virtual and also October 6. The evaluation planning meeting on October 6, same thing, um, well following the, the other one. Are there anything else to add to that Sabrina? Not unless there's any other meetings that the board would like to set. <laughs> Hearing nothing, any other comments or anyone would like to a last word? What was the time of the town hall meeting again please Morris? Um, well, if you read the stuff, it's September 28th at uh, 7 o'clock. 7, thank you. You're welcome. So the committee did opt to make that one an evening. Our last one, if memory is serving me, was 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But it was an afternoon, 3. Um, so we thought that we would try a different time. Um, never quite know with the virtual meeting, season to season, timing changes. Uh, but we thought we would just give it a go for an evening this time. Okay, sounds good. With nothing else, at uh, 3.55, I now um, declare this uh, this um, meeting adjourned. Thank you, Morris. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, See everyone. everybody on Saturday. Yes. Thanks.